Hey gamers, this is Maniac with Game Access shooting a supplemental on the top 10 Halo uh, cutscenes. And the reason why I'm doing this is because the comments have finally come through. I'm very pleased with all of the comments that I've received so far. But a lot of people were upset about the rules of the previous, uh, of the previous top 10 in that I had cut out Halo Wars and I had cut out Halo ODST. And in truth, I honestly didn't think a lot of people would be that upset about that. Um, well, the reason why I kind of cut those out was not just because that Bungie didn't, didn't make the Halo Wars cinematics, it was be also because the Halo ODST uh, cinematics were, couldn't get the nostalgia. And, and same thing with Halo Wars. The, the nostalgia points, because the games were so new, they were released in 2009, both of them were released in 2009, um, the nostalgia points just didn't work. They just didn't feel, they just, none of them just, just stacked up. Um, that is that I know that's no cop out. I understand that a lot of people wanted me to include some of those on the list. So I thought I'd shoot uh, a supplement video. Uh, ones that I wanted to make the list but couldn't be for whatever reason. Um, because I had just, because I was stuck with just 10, it was very difficult. So um, hopefully this will make everybody happy. It's making me happy. So this is the uh, Halo uh, cutscene supplement. And you can kind of consider that none of, the, uh, none of these would make the final list. Um, even if they were stacked up against the previous 10 that I've already posted up. So you could kind of consider these like a 15 through 11. Um, so there are, but there are going to be some, uh, some new rules of this, uh, of this new thing. One is that no cutscene that was in the previous list can be admitted into this supplement. Um, it's just going to be um, a supplement of 5, a 15 through 11. So no previous cutscenes. Uh, secondly, the scores are graded the same. Um, they will be graded on story, music, setting, quotable dialogue, and of course the nostalgic. Um, so the scores will still be the same. So everybody uh, sit back and enjoy the top, uh, the top 10 supplement, uh, Halo Cutscenes. And this is number 15, and number 15 is the opening cutscene to Halo Wars, and there's a very good. Re there's actually a few good reasons why. Uh, this was a fantastic, fantastic cinematic. Um, it, it, I, it is kind of a two-part cinematic in that it starts off with the narration, then provides the setting right afterwards. Um, you get to see the war as it's being fought with uh, warthogs, chain guns, covenant. Um, you get to see the battle. You know some of the battles of for uh, what it took to clean back harvest. Um, the guy who played Captain Cutter did a fantastic opening narration to set the scene. Uh, the CGI graphics were just phenomenal uh, all around, getting to see the planet. And it kind of reminded me, when I first saw this cutscene, it, um, it was during some kind of preview moment. I think it was probably for a GameTrailers.com uh, TV show. And uh, the, it just went to show that, obviously, this was going to be something new that there was, this was going to be a different kind of Halo game. That uh, they were going to keep the spirit of the thing, but they were going to do their own thing. And it also reminded me a lot, as an as a original PC gamer, uh, reminded me of Jedi Knight, when each individual scene, that was like very similar to that, in that after each level you get a new cutscene, same thing with Halo Wars, you get a new cutscene after each level. Uh, you wanted to see that cutscene, those cutscenes looked fantastic. You wanted to see the next cutscene, so it was a real good incentive. And uh, that's why it's number 15. Captain's Report, February 4th, 2531. Five years. Five long years. That's how long it took us to get Harvest back. Go, go, go! First it was going well, then setback after setback. Loss after loss. Made what was going to be a quick and decisive win. Into five years of hell. Of 
course, that's all Harvest is today. It's hell down there. But now it's ours again. Serena, status. Standard orbit achieved. All systems normal. Prep for pod launches, bring weapon systems online. Expecting trouble, Captain? Harvest may be ours again, but I don't think the Covenant appreciate that yet. Sergeant Forge, report. Definitely plenty of bad guys down here, Captain. And they found something in the ice. Damn it. That complicates our mission. Anders, what have you got? Captain. Scans of the northern polar regions show some interesting Covenant activity on the surface. There's some kind of structure down there. What do you think they're looking for? That's what we're here to find out. We're to bring Alpha Base up to operational status and take control of that site. I'll get my equipment ready, Captain. Lady, there's no way you're coming down here on the first bird. Sergeant Forge, pull back to Alpha Base. I'm sending you some backup. Roger that. Forge out. So, nothing too difficult then? It might be the key to this whole war, Serena. It's worth the risk. And this is number 14. And the number 14 is uh, Teari Plaza intro scene in uh, Halo 3 ODST. And, well, there's a bunch of good reasons why I chose this one. Particularly, it's because of the performances of uh, Nathan Fillion and Trisha Helfer, Buck and Dare's character. This was a great way to show different ways to... Um, this, was, this was a great way to show a different kind of way of telling a story um, from character to character. But also, they were feeding us exposition, but it didn't really feel like uh, exposition. The two of them were arguing on the radio. We, only see we never see Trisha Helfer. We only know that she's pretty much stuck in her pod. After the events of what happened, they all got uh, they got separated, and uh, only we only see Fillion, but we hear her over the radio, and it's obvious that those two had some serious background. Like it was that the relationship was certainly more serious than um, than we were originally led to believe. In fact, uh, it had a great line. There were a bunch of great lines, but the best line that I liked was when uh, she says, "Do you remember that night? That that morning after uh, that night." And he says, I can remember not getting an answer. And she says, say again, Buck, I didn't, ca I didn't catch that. Because the radio was broken up or something. And he, and he does it. He doesn't say it again. He, so it's obvious that he had asked her to marry him. And she had, never, she had never given him an answer. And then that was basically the end of their relationship right there. And that was, that was really a great moment. So that's why it's number 14. Do something wrong, because the only thing I regret about you and me not knowing you were a spook when we first met. I would have been a lot less charming. That's what I missed most about you, Buck. Well, your mouth was always a little faster than your brain. 
Look, don't start about my job. We both agreed to end it. That was years ago, Veronica. I'm a little fuzzy on the <coughs> details. Must have met a lot of other saps since then. Why pick me for the safari? First, you're the best soldier I know, and second, you still don't remember that night? What you asked me in the morning? I remember not getting an answer. Say again, Buck. You're breaking up. I said stay put. I'm on my way. We miss our LZ. This grid is packed with Covenant. Be careful. I appreciate the concern. Won't be much of a rescue if you're dead. And this is number 13. And the number 13 is... Uh, the opening cinematic to the Maw level in the original Halo. Um, there is a... Actually, I know this is kind of... This may seem like, well, this is a regular Halo uh, cutscene. This could have made the list. It came very, very close to making the initial top ten. It was on the very bottom. Um, the, there was a cutscene or two that actually had... When I, when I added those to the list, it basically got dropped off the list. And I was really upset because I really wanted this cutscene to be on the list. But... Um, because it was on the, it, because it was like one of those um, number tens, you know, it got dropped off the list when the, when a new edition came in, and uh, unfortunately that cutscene. But I really did feel like this cutscene should be responded, and the reason why is simply because of um, there really is nothing. It, there's no, there's very little dialogue in the scene. It's all just presenting a setting. But it did such a great job of presenting a setting, and the music uh, that alone just made it. That alone uh, just made it. Uh, Marty O'Donnell's music in that scene, and you see the just just the camera moving through, and we see the wreckage of the Pillar of Autumn, and the Master Chief and Cortana are flying towards it in a banshee. Uh, you just think, oh my gosh, what a beautiful, what a, just a beautiful scene, and that music just made it so great. And then of course it capped off with that very humorous bit where Master Chief intentionally crashes the uh, the the banshee simply to piss off Cortana. It's a great moment, and that's why it's number thirteen. Hold. We're not gonna make it. We'll make it. Pull up! Pull up! You did that on purpose, didn't you? <laughs> 